Antonio Ledesma was elected the mayor of Metropolitan Caracas, Venezuela in 2008, defeating the socialist candidate favored by Hugo Chavez. The Chavez regime responded by taking away the funding and powers of the mayor's office and by creating a rival position run by a socialist party member. Despite the obstacles, Mayor Ledesma persevered in addressing the needs of the people of Caracas, providing programs to provide a solution to citizens' problems. Working with other cities around the world, he developed impressive projects, such as the Caracas Metropolitan Strategic Plan for 2020, smart traffic lights, and the Transmetropoli. Mayor Ledesma locked on doors around the world to achieve ideas that would turn Caracas into a city for life. On July 3rd, 2009, the mayor went on a hunger strike in defense of his employees' salaries, which were taken away by the Chavez regime, and for the freedom of others who had been arrested for demanding the same. Mayor Ledesma has been one of the most vocal critics of the ruling party, now headed by President Nicolás Maduro. For all of this, police came to arrest Mayor Ledesma last year in a violent raid on his office. Based on trumped up charges, he's now a political prisoner facing up to 26 years in jail. I now ask you to please watch a video. Este es un momento crucial para toda Venezuela. A nosotros nos corresponde saber leer e interpretar estas coyunturas. No es solo identificar la crisis, no solo decir tenemos un problema muy grave, sino también poder decirle a nuestro pueblo qué es lo que vamos a hacer con esta crisis y cuáles son los caminos que tenemos que transitar para que nosotros salgamos airosos, victoriosos de esta crisis y no se puede cantar victoria pobre del pueblo que pretenda cantar victoria montándose sobre los cadáveres de otros venezolanos. This is CNN Breaking News. The government of Venezuela has arrested the mayor of that country's capital, Caracas. A Venezuelan military source confirms to CNN that intelligence agents arrested Mayor Antonio Ledesma because of his alleged involvement in a coup against President Nicolas Maduro. Maduro has accused the U.S. of involvement in that alleged coup, but the United States State Department denies those claims. I want to bring in CNN's Rafael Romo with the latest. Good morning, Rafael. Good morning, good morning, John. The mayor's arrest seemed like a military operation. Witnesses, including his wife, say as many as 150 heavily armed intelligence agents burst into his office, breaking the door with a sledgehammer and taking opposition mayor Antonio Ledesma away violently. To accept the award, I would like to call up the mayor's daughter, a courageous human rights activist in her own right, Antonieta Ledesma. extremely honored to be here tonight in representation of my father, Antonio Ledesma, and in representation of our brave political prisoners in Venezuela. Thank you, UN Watch. Thank you, Hillel. You have become the voice of hundreds of Venezuelans, including my father, that today feel completely silenced in our country. 
Last time when I had the opportunity to speak at the Geneva Summit, I spoke on behalf of 77 political prisoners. Tonight, I'm speaking on behalf of 96. Sadly, this is a number that keeps increasing in my country because our legal system is used as a weapon to intimidate, to threaten, and to fear everyone who dares to speak against this tyranny that has been destroying my country for 18 years. I am 24 years old and I don't know anything differently, anything different than this uh, regime. Tonight I don't wanna only speak about that politician you saw up there on that video. I wanna also speak about a loving father, a loving husband, a loving friend, and about the bravest men I've ever known that I have the privilege to call father. I want to also share with you how my life, how my family's life, my sister who's with me here tonight, changed in a very abrupt way a year and three months ago. 120 police armed men came to my father's office. They showed up, smashed into his office without a warrant for his arrest, without get, giving any sort of explanations why were they taking him, what were the reasons of his arrest, of his kidnap. And for the longest uh, nine hours of my life, for the longest nine hours of my family's life, we went through the psychological terror of not knowing if my father was alive, of not knowing what was happening and if he was being tortured. And it was until late hours of the night that um, the president, the dictator, Nicolás Maduro, came up on national TV and said that my father was being charged for, conspir for conspiring a coup against his government. Something that until today we don't have one proof that can, you know, ally that this is uh, truth or not. So uh, he had his hearing a year after his arrest. Hearing that was supposed to happen 45 days after his arrest, it happened a year after. And in this hearing, the public prosecutor and the judge are trying to give my father two charges, uh, conspiracy and criminal association. Both charges can land him up in jail for 26 years. I remember that that day I felt desperate Anyone who has a father can imagine the desperation of imagining my father ending up his life in jail. And I hug him and I cry to him desperately and I ask him if he was scared, what was our next move? So he hugged me back and he told me that the only fear he had was imagining to lose Venezuela to this dictatorship. So this is Antonio Ledesma, this is my father. He is today the only major of the world who was elected and re-elected for almost 100,000 voters who is illegally arrested. He is the second civil authority of my country. And with this, I'm not trying to make him sound more or less important than our other political prisoners. With this, I want you all to imagine the vulner vulnerability that we're feeling as Venezuelans when something like this can happen to a major Imagine what can happen to the rest of us. Seeing my father in jail has been definitely the hardest and, and the most painful experience that I've been through in my life. But his strength, his courage, has made me see this in a different perspective. Not everyone has the privilege that I have to say, to have a father who gave up his freedom so tomorrow I can have a free country. I want to conclude saying something that I've been asking to myself. Why a country like Venezuela is still part of the UN Human Rights Council? Why in a country where human rights mean nothing? Why when children are dying at hospitals every day due to the lack of medicines, why, when we are going through the worst political and social humanitarian crisis that we've ever been lived in our history, 
and why when stories like my father's sto stories are still happening. Thank you. Thank you, you and watch.